Hey everyone, it's John, and today what I want to do is just share with you some really quite exciting news, at least for me, and that is that you can now access my network automation lab environment for free at absolutely no cost in Cisco DevNet. So straight away, I want to thank Cisco because that is a really amazing resource and they're pretty much opening it up to all the general public just to improve and learn, share, and it's just amazing to be honest. And I particularly want to give a thanks to Stuart Clark. I don't know where he gets the hours at the day. He's always working. If you go on Twitter, he's always pushing out DevNet stuff. He's always sharing information. And me, myself, he's reached out personally and gave me a lot of guidance and a lot of help. And he pretty much set this entire lab up himself. Um, so if you think this is cool, please go thank Cisco. Go thank Stuart. Give him the credit where credit's due because this type of stuff really is beneficial for the community, in my opinion. So in this video... What I want to do is just show you how to access the lab, how you can get it, and like I say, it will cost you nothing. You'll have full access to all the Cisco images, and you can just automate away, and you can have it in, like, say, blocks of, like, eight hours all yourself, completely booked out and ready to go. So with that said, let's go through how to get it. Okay, now the first thing we need to get is the VPN client to help us connect to the actual DevNet sandbox. So what I'm going to do is go here, and I've got it saved here. So this is the URL we want to go to, developer.cisco.com forward slash site forward slash sandbox forward slash any connect. Now I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be going through the Windows installation. So if I just do a download here, and I'm going to save this. That should be that. Open this up. And we'll just extract all. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is click on this one that says application, double click that, and I'm going to say yes. Now I'm just going to install all these selected, you can choose what you like, but I'm going to keep it as a defaults, and then say yes. Okay, so I now need to effectively reboot my system for things to take effect, so I'm going to pause the video and do a reboot. So let's just come back in two seconds and go through the next part. Okay, so we're back from the actual reboot. So now let's open up a browser. And what I'm going to do is go to Google. And if I just search for IPv0 Genie and DevNet, that'll do it. Okay, so it's going to take us to this link here on developercisco.com. Now, this is pretty much the instructions to actually go through the lab, but this link here, okay, this is going to take us to where we can book the sandbox, so click this, and now it's going to prompt us with a login. Now, if you've not got an account with Cisco, go and create one, it doesn't cost you any money, so that's what I'm going to do. I've got my account created, and I'm going to log in with it, so just click login with Cisco ID, and I'll just log this in here. Okay, and now we've logged in. So next thing we're going to do is reserve a time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this box up here and click reserve. Now it's important to remember that this is a shared resource and it's shared not just for my lab but for all of Cisco. So effectively, you're not going to get to book it instantaneously. You'll book it and you can maybe come back maybe the next day and get access for eight hours straight or whatever it is. So we'll see what times we can actually get to book. Okay, so what we want to do is try to book, well, actually try and book just now, but it'll probably say no, so reserve. Okay, now it's actually given me some slots, and now the slot which is shown here doesn't really suit me, so I'm going to say load more slots. Okay, so I've got one for April the 1st, and that is 8.45am, so let's book that, okay? So reserve this time, and I've effectively got it for 8 hours, so reserve this. And now I've actually booked that time slot and what I'm going to do is come back when that box is ready to go and I'll go through the process of getting the lab actually set up to do the automation. Okie doke. So let's pause the video and come back when it's ready to go. And if we go up to reservations up here, what we're going to see is that 
this is the time we have left. We've basically got seven hours left to lab in this to do as much stuff as we want to do and as much as we want to explore. So how do we actually get access? So if we go back, you're going to see it actually does tell you some information. So we've got some login information and we're also going to be getting sent an email. So let's have a look at that email, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the email account with which my Cisco account is linked. This is the one I created the Cisco ID with. I'm going to sign in. And you're going to see this email here, which is going to tell me the connection information. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get that Cisco AnyConnect VPN client we downloaded earlier and put in the credentials. So if I just type in AnyConnect. Okay. So the top box here, we actually need to give the sandbox we're going to be connecting to, which is this part here. Just copy that. And then click connect. It's then going to prompt me for the username, which is here. Copy that. And also, of course, the password. Just hit OK. And we have now connected to the sandbox, okay? So the next thing we need to do is to open up Putty. And as per the instructions on the DevNet website, we're going to have an SSH IP address of 10.10.2050 and a login of developer with a password Cisco12345 with a one replacing the I. So let's go and log in then. The host name is 10.10.2050 and we'll click open. And our login name is developer. And the password is Cisco. One, two, three, four, five. And that is us now in the sandbox. So the next thing we need to do is to set up the actual lab environment. Okay, so let's go and do that now. Okay, now let's go back to the instructions on the actual developer website. So what it says to do is to git clone this actual repo. So let's do that just now. So copy you. And we'll git clone that. And if we do a cd into that. And what I'm going to do is do a viral ls dash dash all. Okay. Now what it's going to show you is our running simulations. Now when you do this, there's a fair chance there's going to be one that says, uh, something about a data center effectively what you need to do is bring that one down as per the instructions so if there's any up just viral down sim name and then you just type in copy and paste whatever the simulation name is okay in this case we're okay now so what i'm going to do is if you notice because we've cloned that repo we've now got a topology.viral file let's do viral up topology.viral this should build the environment which I have. Okay, now when you first do viral nodes, it will still be down because it's going to take a minute or two to boot up, but I give it one or two minutes and we'll have full we'll have full connectivity. Okay, so a minute's passed, and if I do a viral nodes, they're actually active now. And see these management IP addresses? These are the IP addresses which I can use to log in. So what I'm going to do is first get the SSH keys, or rather save the SSH keys. So I'm going to log into these. So if I do SSH and the username is Cisco and the IP address is 172.16.30.101 I believe. Yep. So I just say yes. Add that to my known hosts. Put the password of Cisco in. That's meant to router 1. Do the show IP int brief. There we go. And what I'm doing is, I'm doing this on the Windows subsystem for Linux. You could easily do this from a virtual machine running Ubuntu or something. So what I'm going to do is just add these quickly. Oh, 
Okay, so that's me added all the SSH keys. Now to keep things nice and neat, what I'm going to do is create a separate directory for this. So I'll just do an mkdir and just call it, I don't know, devnet demo. And if we cd into that, what I'm now going to do is create a virtual environment. So if we go up here and just take this command, copy you, paste it in. Now if I do an ls, we've got this virtual environment, let's cd into that, and if I do a source, bin, activate, we've now activated this virtual environment. So what I'm now going to do is clone the repo onto my Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay, so I've actually cloned the repo. What I'm going to do is install PyATS and Genie into the virtual environment. So do pip3 install PyATS. And pip3 install Genie. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is do a cd into intro to genie, ls, and again cd intro to genie. And if I do an ls this time, you're going to see we've got this test bed. Now if we clear this and just do a pi ats, and what I will say is, is that in the original video I was doing genie uh, learn. The new kind of accepted way is to use pi ats. I think genie might be getting deprecated, I'm not certain on that, but I think it is, so we'll go with this way. So genie learn ospf and we'll say the testbed file is testbed.yaml and the output will be call it ospf1. And that's pyats learn that, so if we do an ls and go into ospf1, we've got all this information and we can do cat ospf, I don't know, 4 pops. And you can see all this OSPF information which I've configured for this lab. So just stop that. Or rather let it finish rather. <laughs> now what I'll do is I'll log in to one of the devices. So I'll do an SSH Cisco. And let's go into we'll get into router 3. Cisco. And let's just add a look back of 56. IP address 56. Oh, take that extra dot away. Okay, and we'll do an IP OSPF1 area 0, add it to our OSPF. Come back out that. Uh, what have I done? Oh. <laughs> Confusing myself there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just do a pi ATS learn OSPF testbed file, the testbed.yaml, and the output, we'll call this one OSPF2. Now bear in mind, because we're actually connecting remotely, in my case, across the ocean to America, this might take a little bit longer than ordinarily would. Just bear with it, it might take a minute or so. Okay, so that's us learn the new configuration, clear that. Okay, so if we do an ls, we've got ospf1 and ospf2, let's just do a pyats diff between ospf one ospf2 and make the output just call it ospf diffs and you can see we've actually got a difference on router 3 so if we do an ls cd into ospf diffs and we just cat that diff we can see that loopback 56 has indeed been added so that's pretty much it and the last thing i want to show you is just in case if you don't want to do this on windows subsystem for linux you can actually go in and open up a virtual machine, this is my Ubuntu one and you can actually just SSH from here, so SSH Cisco at uh, once, what's the IP address is again? 172.16.30.101 there we go, show IP and brief and we can do all the same thing, this is my, my environment anyway, just for accessing it from a virtual machine this time so what I will say is if you want to add in other automation tools like Normier, you can still do that. So if I go into and play around with Scrapply quite a lot. Um, so what I'll do is 
all I've done is I've actually amended my host files to have these IP addresses and the username is Cisco rather than John. But you'll see that with this, I can actually just do, just do activate this first. And just do a Python 3, say, norm your script. Show IP OSPF neighbor. And there we go, so we can still run tools like Ansible, Nornir, everything I use pretty much in my labs and you can access this for free. Like I say, I've got an 8 hour block just now, One that once that runs out, I can just rebook it for another day and that's it. And as you can see, it's not too difficult to get set up and get going. So that's pretty much the end of the demo. Like I say, I just want to give a big, big thank you to Cisco DevNet for sharing this resource with all of us because it's so, so handy and so, so helpful. And again, Massive thanks to Stuart Clark who pretty much did all the groundwork and legwork to get this up and running. So like I say, if you want to follow along with my automation videos, then this is an easy way to do it, won't cost you anything, and you can book it for 8 hours at a time. Once that runs out, just rebook it and get another 8 hours, okie doke. So that's the end of the video, thanks very much, we'll see you guys soon.